Dr. Zelda Buerta has dedicated almost three decades of her professional career to teaching children with special learning needs. Research for her doctorate focused on the role of digital technology in promoting skills development for these learners, some of them who have severe intellectual disabilities. She looked at how these learners exposed to technology are actually better prepared for the workplace and are able to function optimally in society. Berta also happens to be the deputy principal at Rastov School uh, for learners with special educational needs and joins us now via our video link. And Doc, it's great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for making time to chat to us. I mean, perhaps at the start, give us the broad strokes of what your research has found about the relationship between technology and skills development, specifically for those with these intellectual disabilities. Um, at first, teacher, thank you for the opportunity. Um, at first, teachers did not want to use the technology provided by the department because they were scared and um, they were not trained. Um, and the teachers that was interested in technology started using it, and they were actually astonished with what they found, that these learners actually were, was capable. Because they were severe intellectually disabled, people tend to label them as not able to learn, and this study proves it wrong. Sure. What kind of technologies are we talking here? Um, because, of course, there's a whole range of innovations that take place sometimes on a daily basis that I imagine some of them could, quite frankly, be too overwhelming. It is, but the department equipped schools with certain equip, um, technology, for instance, e-beams, Mimeos. It's an electronic pen that you write with on a magnetic board, interactive boards, laptops, tablets, and visualizers, and that's more than enough, and you can teach with that uh, um, technology. You can teach anything to these learners. That is all that I used. Yeah. I'm interested to find out a bit more details around how this technology itself leads to these better outcomes. I mean, from your observation, what is it about the technology itself that stimulates this, this desired outcome, for lack of a better term? You know, the children love it. Mm. Um, most important, you know, our learners are visual learners, visual over verbal. Um, the technology is consistent. It doesn't change. Um, there's nobody that, then there's a raised voice or a soft voice. It's always the same. Or somebody laughing to distract their attention. Um, they are constantly cheered and encouraged and um, to try again. Um, there's no emotions attached to it. Some learners, especially learners um, with severe intellectual disabilities, that also has traits of autism, um, can't read emotions. Um, so that's why they're also into technology. They thrive on cause and effect. Um, if they press a button, then something happens. Um, as I said, they are the visual learners. And then, of course, the instructions and icons of technology is always in the same place. That makes it much easier um, for them to use and to learn. Absolutely. You've touched on this already, but part of what this does is push back against this myth that um, pupils with intellectual disabilities are unable to learn. They're unteachable. This obviously paints a very different picture. Absolutely. Um, that was the reason for my study. Um, most t people study um, PhDs for research, but mine was different. I started because of my passion for these learners and to um, show that our education system needs a change, especially for these learners. There's always catering for other disabilities, but they forget about severe intellectual disabled learners. And um, the only way it's going to change, if, and that's my recommendation, if they, they must build and make it compulsory for teachers to use technology um, in the classrooms. And for skills development, most teachers use it for their own use for lesson planning. But they don't let the learners use the technology, and it was actually given for the learners. Yeah. A question that I'm wondering whether or not you explored in any way is what happens to those pupils who find themselves in institutions that don't have these smart classrooms, for lack of a better term, because we do know that there are still a whole myriad of issues within the sector, one of them being this long-standing matter of the digital divide, as they say. You know what, sir, then that is where I started with technology. Um, you must start by yourself as teacher. Professional development, always important. The first way that I started is before technology was even in schools. Um, I sold cookies and old clothes, and I bought tablets for my classroom because I wanted to prove to everybody that children with severe intellectual disabilities can learn. So at first, I took out of my pocket, um, 
funds to buy my own technology. Um, if you wait on the department, you're going to wait forever. Um, do your own thing. If you want to yeah. go forward, you must show it to yourself. Yeah. You they will give when they can. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, right? We, we certainly hope that eventually it's forthcoming. Um, but you touched on a very important aspect, which I was hoping to ventilate with you, and that's around how equipped teachers actually are to be able to give the best to these pupils, given especially what you found in your research. I mean, do we have enough of those educators who are not only keen and proactive enough, but quite frankly, are trained well enough to be able to make the most of, again, what you found? So again, to me, it's professional development. In our age, day and age, everybody uses technology, cell phones, everybody uses a cell phone. And actually COVID showed to all of us that if you must use technology, you must. Everybody had to use it and start giving classes online. Um, so if you weren't into technology, those teachers got on board very quickly. Um, so it's just where there's a will, there's a way. Mm, um, absolutely. And if you, if you want to be a teacher in the future, shape up or shape out. <laughs> All right, from, from your words, not mine. But uh, very quickly before I let you go, I imagine consistency obviously helps. Uh, is this the kind of direction you think parents who can afford should also be taking with their children who are living with intellectual disabilities? So absolutely, and you know what? The cell phone in the hand is the first piece of technology. There's a lot of special needs apps on cell phones. The app that I developed um, is Android. It can be played on any cell phone, any tablet. So they don't need a, a tablet as per se. They can use a cell phone. That's technology. Absolutely. Well, good on you for your work. Your passion certainly comes through for our discussion. I guess I can only wish you the best with your endeavor moving forward. Dr. Zelda Bothe is the Deputy Principal of the uh, Rustov School for Learners with Special Needs, or Special Education Needs, I should add. Once again, Stock, uh, thanks very much for your time.